For the fingerless gloves, or sometimes they're called texting mitts these days, you'll need the Deborah Norville Serenity Chunky Yarn, which you have here. And the color that I'm using is the Lilac Chiffon. And you need the L crochet hook. I'm using the Deborah Norville crochet hooks. And I'm going to use two stitch markers and a yarn needle and something to cut with. So let's get started. To begin, you chain 20, which I've already done, and you join with a slip stitch to form a ring. So you'll have it in your hands like this with all those ovals facing you, and you just go like this. And you insert your hook there, yarn over like this, and draw that through, and then draw that through the loop on your hook. So that's joining with a slip stitch. And then you chain three, and that's going to count as your first double crochet. And then you just double crochet in each chain around. We're starting here at the bottom, and we'll be doing some post, back post, front post, double crochet stitches. And then we're going to go solid in half double crochet. Then we're going to create a space for the thumb. Then we go back to half double crochet and then finish off with one round of post stitches again. So on this round you just double crochet in each chain around. We have other videos that show you how to do the basic stitches like the chain and the slip stitch and the double crochet. My main goal here is to teach you how to make this mitt. So if you need help with the other um, stitches that you see me using, um, just search the channel you're on. And everything that you see me use here there'll be links below the video to the pattern, to the hooks, the yarn. So the side I'm working on here is the right side and I'll be staying on the right side throughout the whole project. So now I have 20 double crochets and then the instructions say to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet. And in the beginning we said chain three would count as your first double crochet. So you want to slip stitch in the third chain of the beginning chain three. So you would insert your hook in that third chain there, yarn over, and bring that through the loop that's on your hook. And that completes round one. And now I'm going to chain two and that will count as my first back post double crochet now and throughout. Then I'm going to front post double crochet in the next double crochet. So to do that, I'm not going to work in this one. I'm going to go in the next one right here and I'm going to insert my hook from right to left here or from this side to that side and yarn over, pull loop up, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. And that's a front post double crochet. I worked around the post of the double instead of in the stitch. Now you don't want to work any stitch in, this, in, that, in those two loops behind it. You want to go on to the next one. And for this one, I'm going to work a back post double crochet. So to do that, I'm going to yarn over, and instead of going in the front here, I'm going to go in the back of the stitch, around the back of it. I'm going to go from back to front and then the front back to the back. And I'm going to yarn over back there, draw that loop up, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. So that creates the post in the back. So now I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook from front to back, and back to the front, yarn over, draw a loop up, yarn over, draw through two, yarn over, draw through two. 
and that's another front post double crochet stitch. Now I'm going to yarn over from the back I'm going from the back to the front and then back to the back around that double crochet I'm going to yarn over pull loop up yarn over draw through two yarn over draw through two so every other one I'm doing a front post and, a, and then the alternate one I'm doing the back post so here's a front post I'm going from here to there yarn over draw that up yarn over draw through two yarn over draw through two now the back I'm coming in from behind around that post and I'm going like this bring my hook up in the back and bring that there like that once you get the hang of it it's really easy basically so I'm doing a front and then I'm doing a back so the front is like that and the back is like that you can stay on the right side of the work when you're working the back you just have to reach your hook back there like yarn over and go back here Okay, now I'm back to the first one. It said that chain two would count as the back post. And you see here, I ended with a front post. And then I've got a front post over here, and this one won't uh, be worked into. So now I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the first half double crochet for the first stitch. And go like that. Chain two again. Now this time the only difference is that you've got a post stitch here to work in but it's the same thing you're going to work a front post around the front post double crochet like that then you're going to work a back post around the back um, post double crochet then a front post and then a back post and then a front and it just keeps the ribbing um, continuing. So if you look on the wrong side you see that you have the same ribbing but it, it's on alternate stitches in the back. In one of my, uh, in my afghan book I have it, an entire afghan, I think it's on the cover of the book, that was done in all ribbing stitch back and forth exactly like this. It's really beautiful when you change colors. Because the color from each row dips down into the rows below. So anyway, there, this is going to be row two. Now this is row three and then you'll do this again for round five, not row three, it's going to be round. So you'll do this again um, until you get to round four and then in round five I'll come back on camera and show you what to do next. So I have completed round four and now I'm going to work round five. So I've joined and I'm going to chain one and then it says single crochet in the same stitch as joining which is right there in the chain two. So I'm going to go in there, yarn over, draw through two loops and that's a single crochet. So then I'm going to work half double crochet all the way around. So you get a little break from the post stitches. But it really does add a nice little wrist edge to this. 
design. I think it's really cute. I think it's nice because the yarn is really soft and nice to work with. And then you add in the texture from the stitch and the yarn is already bulky. But then you add an extra bulk to it with that um, back post, front post stitch. I think it's kind of nice. Okay, so I'm back to my single crochet right here. So now it says, do not join, but mark en ends of rounds. So that's where the stitch markers come in. So right here, I am going to add a stitch marker before, after I work the last stitch of the round and before I go work into that single crochet. So what I want to do is just to put a marker like right, I guess in the last stitch that I just worked. Something where I know that this is the end of this round and this is the beginning of this round. So I just need something right in between there to show me that. So I'm just going to put my little stitch marker there and then I continue on with half double crochets. Just like that. And that's how I start on round six so you work, you, and when you come back around, you just move the stitch marker, like your last stitch will be right here. And that's why I have two colors of stitch markers, because I'll work my last stitch around six here, and then I'll put the stitch marker in here before I work in this stitch right here. So I just keep moving the stitch markers. That's why I have two, so I can place this one. Then when I come around the next round, I can move this one up to the next one. So I can just keep alternating these two stitch markers. So go ahead and continue around with just half double crochet stitches up until round nine. And then on round 10, we'll put in the space for the thumb. So, um, but you don't join the rounds and just keep marking the rounds as you go up. So round 10 starts out with a chain two and then you skip two half double crochets and then you half double crochet in the next half double crochet right there and then you half double crochet around and I'm not placing a stitch marker because I know that my my uh, the beginning of my round started with chain two. So I'll move my stitch marker on the next round. So you just half double crochet around. These would make great gifts. I've been wearing the, the one around the office. I just love it. Now I'll have a match after I get this done. And they're very, very quick to make. You can make a bunch of them for gifts. Okay, so you see I just came right back around to my chain two. So this is where I want to place my other marker. I just, I'm just going to place it in my last stitch I worked in right there. And now I'm just going to half double crochet in the each one of the chains. And now I'm working a half double crochet in each one of the half double crochets. So this is round 11. So now you just continue in pattern working half double crochet around and you finish round 11 and do 12 and 13 and 14 and then I'll come back on camera and show you what to do after that. I just completed uh, all the half double crochets of round 14 and then in the very end you may have noticed that the pattern says to single crochet in the next half double crochet and slip stitch in the next. And that just brings you back to an even height of stitches because when you don't do that you're left with like something like that. So we need to go back to 
even um, let me get to do a single in there you go back to even so that we can put in the last round of half double crochets I mean of post stitches so you're going to do a single there and a slip stitch and then you chain two and that's going to count as a back post double crochet and then you just work the front post back post stitches around the half double crochets of round 14 just go back and forth it's still a post double crochet stitch but now it's being worked around the double instead of around the half double instead of the double so you just do it like that and this will be the final final round So you continue around like that until you finish the round then you join like you joined these and let me show you real quick how you sew the end in and then your project's going to be complete. So I'll show you down here this is the end of my starting chain I fold the uh, end of the yarn over the side of the needle like this I pinch super hard and I pull the needle out and then I open my pinch fingers just a little enough to push the eye of the needle over the folded edge. I actually like a metal yarn needle better because this one has some flex to it. And um, so anyway links to the a metal uh, needle will be on below the video. So now I just this is where I came out right here so I'm just going to go right next to that and then maneuver the tip of the needle in about three quarters of an inch there and then bring it out and then wherever it came out I'm going to go just a little bit behind it to kind of lock it and then go back out maybe another half inch and then I'll do that one more time at least three times because if you wash and wear these a lot you don't want the ends falling out especially if you give it as a gift and then for cutting you definitely want to cut flat like this not down into the yarn so that is how you make the fingerless gloves or texting mitts whatever you want to call them but anyway that's how they're made Thank you very much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed the lesson.